Okay, hey guys, we are in Gilbert, Arizona, and we just finished a 1976 Ford F-150 on the front cover of the F-100 Builder's Guide. So hopefully you're gonna go out and support the magazines and purchase it. And so what we've got is a completed restoration, resto mod, full-blown build right behind me, 1976 Ford F-150. So there's a lot that we did. Now, the cool thing about this is this is actually the original two-tone. So this is the original metallic silver, but not the original white. The original white actually was, um, I don't remember which one it was, but it was a little more off-white and it didn't actually look really good with the silver. So we kind of changed it up a little bit and picked a, a different Ford white, kept it forward for everybody uh, so that it would complement and look a little bit better. And so at the end of the day, uh, we've got this pickup truck here, ready to go take it for a test drive. So what we've got is all the original trim, we sent out, had polished, cleaned up, new rubber on it. Um, we've got these really awesome fuel wheels. Uh, the original grill shell, which is kind of cool. The grill is in really good shape, so we cleaned it up, polished it because we wanted it to just look spectacular. And a super over-the-top interior. So you feel like you're in a brand new F-150, which is kind of cool. And then under the hood we got a 2019 mustang gt gen 3 coyote swapped with a 10-speed automatic transmission out of an f-150 and then we also have the f-150 transfer case but not to be outdone we added a whipple supercharger and so it's got a lot of horsepower and it's fun to drive it's fast and it's mean and it sounds awesome and the guy's gonna have uh, that owns this truck he's gonna have a ton of fun driving this thing so it's not tuned super powerful, meaning we kept the pulley kind of larger just because you can do a burnout in third gear, get sideways that fast. And so we also want to err on the side of safety. Uh, if he wants to change the pulley and get it up to 800 rear wheel, rear wheel horsepower, that's up to him. Now, the interesting thing about this is that this is a long bed and it's four wheel drive. And so it's not your typical coyote swap vehicle you're seeing out there. You're always seeing you know, the 1953 to 1956s, uh, 70, 73, 79, 67, 72, all those other generations, two wheel drive, short bed. Um, this is four wheel drive, long bed. And actually it looks the most appropriate with a little bit of a four inch lift and all Fox shocks on this thing that it actually, it actually handles really well. So even though it's got a lot of power and some of the suspension is still stock, because of the long bed and the size and just the girth of the vehicle, it actually rides super comfortably. So we're going to go for a drive and uh, let's jump in and let's go show you what this thing can do. Fire this bad boy up. One of the things we tried to do is not allow the exhaust to be super loud, even though he want, wanted to hear this thing. But I'm not, I'm, I hate drone. I hate a, obnoxious exhaust just with passion. But at the end of the day, um, we tried to meet to where it sounds good under a load, but not too crazy. And so, um, so this is the exhaust system we came up with. We're using a uh, resonator and uh, I think we have two, one or two resonators. And then we also have a, a nice big Borla muffler. It actually sounds pretty good now. I'm actually happy with it. I'm okay with it. And with all the sound deadening and everything we have in here, and because it's a long wheelbase and the muffler's clear or the tailpipe's clear in the back, it actually there's no drone at all, and so I'm pretty happy with it. Um, just a few little things. We got the retro sound um, radio here mounted to some speakers in the back. Um, so you still have the vintage, you know, uh, touch to it. And um, you've got, uh, you know, wireless for your phone, hands-free uh, calling if somebody calls you, and you can hear. We've also got the Restomod AC system. So you're gonna get cold air. We've actually got a kit that actually makes all this stuff work. So if you're doing a coyote swap, you want to put a uh, Restomod AC in your vehicle, we sell a kit that makes it all work. So these seats that I'm sitting in belong to a Mustang. Uh, the customer wanted bucket seats. And let's see if I can get this adjusted a little bit better for myself. Well, we actually talked about it. He goes, what's what should I do? Bucket seats? Should I do a bench seat? And I initially thought we were going to do a bench seat. 
and um, and then I said, well, it all depends on how much you plan to drive it, comfort. And I said, bucket seats are more comfortable. So he said, let's do bucket. So we actually came up with a bracket that allows you to install a bracket that makes it easy for you to put Mustang seats in it. So if you're doing a coyote swap of your own and you want to put Mustang seats in it like we did, we sell a bracket, makes it super simple. You can go online, I think it's like 179 bucks shipped or something like that. It takes all the headache out of trying to figure out how to mount it. Um, you still use the, uh, right here, the off the Mustang, you can still have that piece there, bolt it in, connects. You can you still use the same mount. And so it feels very modern, feels very normal. Um, super comfortable. It's got little bolsters that kind of hold you in place. And you're not going to be sliding all, all over the road. Uh, or you're not going to be sliding all over the seat as you're sliding all over the road when you get on it. Um, but it's comfortable. I mean, honestly, I could drive this thing every single day. It's that comfortable. Um, it's just classic looking. It has a nice con console right here. You've got plenty of storage cup holders for all the fun stuff you got some lights here for fog lights uh, you got your four-wheel drive switch to go into two high four high four low um, and all the amenities that you really need that you use and you just go cruising so it's pretty fun I like it so we'll get we'll get going and get on the road and show this off just a little bit. You wouldn't think with 35 inch tires and all that tread that you could get it to break free just like it does, but just the little bit back there kind of spun just a little bit. You kind of have to be a little more cautious. So 1973-79, they call these trucks the dent side because where the molding goes on the 67-72, it pops out. They call that the bump side, and on the 73-79, it's pushed in. It's dented in where the molding goes. So they refer to it as the dent side. Um, a lot of variations in 73 to 79, not as many in 67, 72, and so a lot of the kits and things we've come out with for the 73, 79 have proved to be a lot more challenging. They had a lot of different designs. In 76, they added the, the three-point seatbelts, um, but you couldn't get that option uh, until 1976, and so if you want to add those, it's just a little bit more complicated. Um, and so there's a lot of four-wheel drive differences. They were constantly changing uh, coils, uh, you know, the suspension design. They had a high boy version. They had just all these different versions. And it seems like in 73, 79, that that was kind of where they were really getting into a more friendlier, comfortable truck. And so you had more amenities. Things are getting more built into the dash, more comfortable. Um, just you know more ergonomically friendly and so as you get into the 73 79 uh, the suspension and everything is just a lot better and so a lot of these trucks are becoming a lot more popular to overhaul and rebuild because it is a little bit more comfortable truck but still retains the real classic look now in 78 79 the headlights changed and you they went to a square he headlight which some people love that I'm impartial, I don't really care. I like them all. Uh, these are basically all new headliner. Everything's brand new in here, and so it, it really gives you a, an idea of what a, uh, the changes we've made. Uh, the goal really is just to make it as comfortable as you can and still, in some ways, modernize it a little bit, which everybody likes their new trucks, but can you still retain some of that nostalgia old school retro feeling that 
brings back all those memories that we've talked about in other videos. It's, it's memories. Um, and sometimes you just want to be a badass. So that, that's going to happen. You just want to cruise around and know that you have a little bit of a badass. When you pop the hood up and everybody sees that coyote and the Whipple supercharger, kind of a little bit exciting. Uh, they hear it start up and they see it take off. I mean, it's, it's pretty impressive. Uh, I've, I've driven this quite a bit and it's fun to kind of be side by side with somebody and, and they're giving you the thumbs up and, and then you just blow the doors off them and everybody's wondering what happened. So, especially with the supercharger. I mean, it's like instant power. Turbos have that second delay, but not on a supercharger. It's pretty instant. Um, we've put 350 miles on this and probably I think the guy's local so I think I'm usually about there I'm about ready to go ahead and let it go so within the next 50 miles we got a little bit of paint touch up to do now that we've got some miles on it we need to kind of polish it up and fix a few little paint chips and and get it to him so that he's he can take it and drive it because he's close I don't mind I don't mind uh, letting it go a little bit earlier just in case there's a problem. It's really easy to fetch it. When they're a state away or eight states away, man, that gets really problematic. And whose fault is it? And whose problem is it? And who's responsible for it? And so I definitely like to put more miles on them just for uh, avoid those awkward conversations. Um, but get over here we're gonna get on the freeway and just kind of get it up to speed it drives actually really well the disadvantage to these trucks if when you leave everything stock is that you're stuck with a power steering gearbox and those are um, those are not always the best and so you usually got to replace them I like to replace them with an original Ford one maybe have that rebuilt uh, and get the needle bearings in there maybe it's a little bit more tighter of a feel but you're always going to have with a lifted truck and big tires and a gearbox there's always going to be that 1970s uh, play in the steering wheel as you drive it so you can see that there's just a little bit we did you know that's kind of a, about the play you're going to have you're just going to have to wrestle with it there's not much you can do about it you change all your suspension and you put a different like a power steering rack or something up front to figure all that out it's definitely going to be a little bit tighter feel but that's that's a whole nother level I mean that's to get there adds a whole nother layer of, of to a build and, and cost and not everybody wants to go there I don't mind managing the steering wheel a little bit so You get on the freeway we got up to about 95 right there I didn't push it we were chirping between all the gears and so I don't want to break anything honestly because I don't want to have to fix it so I'm always that conservative guys want to do burnouts and all this stuff I'm like don't break it don't break it let's get it to the customer first let him do the burnout smooth though like it it feels as smooth as my f-250 that I drive every day uh, definitely not not any rougher and it's got more power than my f-250 for sure um, we took it on a dyno and uh, keep in mind we're only doing about 10 pounds of boost on this when we did it and at 10 pounds of boost on a dyno with the 10 speed transmission and running through a transfer case we still managed to do 500 rear wheel horsepower which is actually a lot most of your vehicles that are being driven on the road today are nowhere close and we're able to actually uh, you know have a lot of power which I think is plenty it's it's not unmanageable now if we change the pulley and we start getting up to about 18 to 20 pounds of boost this is going to be a lot more of a handful and I guess if you're looking for dyno numbers just to kind of brag, maybe you want to put a larger 
a smaller pulley. But um, again, I'm always conservative. I don't want to break anything. And I don't want to see anybody spend a bunch of money on stuff uh, when it's going to be a lot of fun. 750 rear wheel horsepower is actually hard to drive. It's uh, you're only using about quarter throttle. Even me right now, I mean, I'm barely. If you watch out, watch my pedal down here. I'm cruising 70 miles an hour. Watch, watch how it hardly moves. Like I'm barely using like an eighth of an inch of the throttle. It's because it's got all the power in the world. Now, for gears, we did go with a, a 411 gear ratio, and obviously we could have gone with like 390s, but. You're also trying to get some performance and quickness and get going. And so 411 gears, we felt we could justify it with the 35-inch uh, tall tires and a 10-speed transmission. And so here we are. We're cruising at, I'll go a cruising speed of 75 miles an hour. And we're at 2,000 RPMs. So even with a supercharger, He's probably going to still get 18 miles per gallon out of this thing, which is still pretty impressive considering the magnitude of the truck and the gears and the ratio. It's just what a 10-speed automatic transmission does. Now, it'll shift more than like a 6-speed, but uh, it's just, and it'll feel different, but that's just the way 10-speeds are. Uh, some people love them or hate them. I tend to like them because I feel like it's a much faster driving vehicle you're not having to take the RPM so high up before it's quickly shifting through all the gears. It's just a more compressed ratio. And you got four overdrive gears with a 10-speed automatic transmission. So you're just going to get really good fuel economy. And still have plenty of power to boot. Okay, yeah, we're going to get lunch while we're out. And uh, I'm on a diet, and so I'm trying to lose weight. So I'm thinking salad. Is what it's gonna got is what it's got to be. So, I'm actually down about 35 pounds from a few months ago, and uh, just started hitting the gym again and trying to get back into shape. I'm 48 years old, and so I don't want to be super fat when I hit 50, because I've heard at 50, man, it just goes downhill fast. So, trying to get back in shape and doing these videos, I look at myself and I. I feel like uh, everybody lies when they say the camera adds 10 pounds. It feels like it adds 20 pounds. You, you never really feel as big as you when you see yourself on camera. And so slim it down a little bit. Uh, New Year's resolutions coming up, so I might as well get started on those early. But uh, I mean, probably the most difficult challenge you have with trucks like this is sealing them up against weather. I'm not, not against weather, but against wind is what I'm trying to say. The weather you can keep out, but again, you're, you're still dealing with 1976 technology and that was just a rubber gasket. And it got better in the, you know, in the 90s. Things were a lot quieter, but um, it's not too bad. I mean, we could crank the radio up and you just got that external wind noise you're battling. Not, also not aerodynamic either. Uh, trucks these days are a little bit more round and they can handle the wind a little bit easier. So I'm pretty happy with this thing. I hope he's happy too. We do a lot of pickup trucks. Uh, we're getting into Broncos and the specialty I would say for us is that I like to make sure everything's been engineered to go together and I also like to make sure that if I'm going to do it again that we've developed the system to allow us to reproduce the same quality of product over and over. Um, Jonathan Ward uh, at Icon, he's, he's kind of, you know, I, honestly I just kind of studied him and his process a little bit and kind of over the years had to learn to develop my own. and. I wanted to be able to reproduce things over and over. So I've kind of looked at a lot of different companies 
and builders and try to find out, you know, what is our, our niche? And, and your niche is, you know, as a builder is really what you like to do. I like to solve problems. Um, as, we, as we try to build trucks, you're always faced with problems. And so how do we solve it for not just this build, but for the next build? So we don't have to keep remembering what we did to solve it. And, and then how do we take those products and share those to those guys that maybe can't afford to hire a builder but would like to build their own truck and would like to have it turn out nice and how can we help them solve those problems. And so that's something that I've tried to implement in Fat Fender Garage is you know the skills that we've learned and developed share those with people and, and sell those parts to those people that you know are looking for it. And it is actually a really tall order. Uh, we spend a lot of money and time developing maybe one little bracket, but once we've done it, it's over. So I might have 40 hours that I've spent developing a, a $50 part, and, but I don't ever have to develop it again. And it's done, and it works, and it's, you know, it's wonderful. Now, coyote swaps are all the rage right now, and I fully stand behind them. I don't really want to use the old FE motors or, you know, some of those, um, you know, 360, 390, 460, 490, 420, 427. Those are, those are actually great motors, and I don't want to discount them. There is a place for them, but actually not at our shop. I try to stay away from them because the power of modern technology and the power of a Coyote and merged together right with the right transmission, the right rear end, does produce something that none of these other motors will ever be able to produce. Um, like this truck right here, you see a Ford Raptor right there. This is faster than the Ford Raptor in a heartbeat. And it's got a, a six cylinder EcoBoost in it and uh, twin turbos. And we actually put one of those in a, a little Ford Ranger, which was fast, and, but uh, it's hard to beat the feel and the sound of a V8. Now with that said, we've actually purchased um, some uh, Godzilla motors and as soon as we get a couple parts in, I hope to start retrofitting the Godzilla motor into these as well and have two motor options that are available. And we'll actually figure out the cam swaps and all the things you need to make a kit for it so that you can create a little more horsepower. So. Where are we going for lunch? Not green, it's in Dana Park. In Dana Park? Yeah. Okay. So for brake system on this, we actually have a hydro boost system. Um, works pretty well. Uh, that was the decision we made when we were determining how much power he's going to have. And then he had big 35 inch wheels on it. We actually developed, in addition, a Wheelwood 14 inch brake kit to put on this at the same time. And so you got plenty of brakes. We put a Wheelwood brake system, disc brakes in the back. Uh, those are some of the other upgrades we made to it. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else special. Oh, we have our wiper reservoir on this as well that we developed uh, that works in the first gen Broncos, second gen Broncos, 67 to 79 pickup trucks. And it's a little aluminum reservoir with an electric pump in there. Um, where's it at, Jack? Where are we? Awesome. I passed it. All right. Uh, we've got an LMC from bumper with the uh, square, or maybe it's the round. I can't remember what we put on it. I think they got both options. Uh, fog lights. We did change them and put some uh, wider bulbs in there rather than yellow. We've got also some, uh, the lights on the front of this are, um, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think why, I wonder why I can't remember. It's hard to remember, you got 25 projects going on. I was trying to remember every little detail of everybody's project. Um, it'll come to me. We use a Flaming River steering wheel. We're actually gonna have that option available for people that want to, uh, 
don't think I want to park this truck by all these people who don't actually don't actually understand what I'm driving here and they think it's just an old piece of crap truck or something but I'll park here a little bit out of the way anyway so we got a flaming river steering wheel which we use that allows us to you know give us a little bit more space because this is a little shorter it's not quite as bulkier as the the I did at one and so not that there's anything wrong with the I did at one but I just kind of like the flaming river one a little bit better so we became a dealer for them when we were making a decision uh, we got custom door panels which we've designed uh, we've got um, uh, fox shocks on here which is actually a really big chore to figure out which ones would work but we figured some out um, and uh, cool cool truck I mean I I don't know I, I can't really find anything to complain about uh, these little pieces right here you can see those seatbelt covers uh, those actually crumbled because of the Arizona Sun they were so old so we actually dropped one and it shattered into like 30 pieces and so um, we made these out of aluminum because we couldn't actually find any of them that were any good and so, and so we actually uh, just created uh, those for um, out of ABS uh, because they're hard to find and everybody's if they do have them they're toast so and I love this thing I hate to let them go so I'm always like well we've got another week of touch-up paint and that's because it's fun to drive and and they're pretty awesome so we're gonna go eat and we'll be back at it